You know, it grieves me when I see people pursue Torah observance or the old Mosaic law in order to have a more full relationship with Jesus Christ. I've done a lot of videos on this subject, and I'd like to break it down even more simply for some folks. Again, not with eloquent words of wisdom, but with very simple human parables or human analogies. The first one is this. It applies mostly to parents, but even if you're not a parent, I think you'd understand. When raising children, did you walk them through your local, state, and federal laws to ensure they were a well-behaved child? Odds are, you did not. I'm betting you raised your children the best you could out of the love and morals God has set upon your heart. In faith, you trust and hope that even though you did not walk your children through every one of the laws, they will be good children and not get into trouble with the law. Well, what then would we say of the parent that asked their child to study the laws? Are they living by faith? I would argue that they are not living by faith. They're too scared and untrusting of their children to live according to the righteousness of their own hearts. Rather, they require the law to be put in front of their eyes and committed to memory. And so it is with those who seek the Torah for their sanctification. There is no faith in following instructions written in ink and stone. It is a choice that is based out of fear. Our God said that the law would be written on your hearts, and the seal of the Holy Spirit would convict you when you fall away from His law. By going backwards to the Torah, you are showing, in matter of fact, a lack of faith. Continuing on in these ways, and you will fall away from the faith in which you began. Romans 2 For when Gentiles who do not have the law, by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. There's a movie that many people are familiar with called Shawshank Redemption. It details the lives of many prisoners and some of the trials that they go through. Particularly, there's a character named Brooks. At a young age, he had murdered someone and was serving essentially life in prison. Towards the end of the movie, he actually makes parole. And while he's outside the prison gates, he's utterly terrified because he's literally spent the majority of his life being told what to eat, what to wear, when to go to the bathroom. All the prison laws are all that he ever knew. And now that he has this newfound liberty or freedom, he had no idea how to handle himself. Eventually, he ended up hanging himself because he didn't know how to live within the context of that freedom. And this isn't just a fictional story. In fact, if you look at real prisoners today, you'll find that many of them will commit a crime almost immediately when they get out of the prison walls just so they can go back into prison because that is all they know and that's all they're comfortable with. If you look at this individual, he was in prison for 26 years and he caused a fire immediately after leaving prison because he concluded that he was unable to live in freedom. So, how does this relate to the Torah? Well, just as these individuals committed crimes and ended up in prison, so it is too with the law. The law was added because of transgressions. That is, until Jesus Christ came and set us free from the works of the flesh of the law and allowed us to practice the righteousness of the law through faith. You see, the Torah is in fact much like prison law. 
told you exactly what you could and could not eat, what you could and could not wear, how to do this or how to do that. But now that Jesus Christ has come, he has set you free from that old law. It does not mean that you are lawless. You are still, in fact, under law. Just like these prisoners, when they are released into society, they are still under law. In the Bible, it's called the law of the Spirit. But it is a law that's based on faith and love and righteousness. It is not based on works of the flesh. But just in this analogy with the prisoners, some people cannot handle that freedom. They want to go back to what they know, what is easy to follow, rather than listening in faith to what God wants them to do. Even Acts 15 says, Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke, which is the law, on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. But yet you still have these folks that are into Torah observance that are trying to get you to follow it. In Galatians 2 it even says that false brothers were brought in trying to spy out our freedom or liberty that we have in Christ Jesus so that they might bring us back into bondage under the law. Folks, don't let these people steal your freedom or liberty in Christ. Now this next parable was given to me by a brother named Rob, and those who are Torah observant are probably going to mock and scoff at the fact that I would dare use Karate Kid to interpret the Bible or heavenly things, but I know this one will incredibly help some folks. Now, one of the most well-known things that came out of this show was when Mr. Miyagi was teaching Daniel's son how to wax on and wax off cars. As Daniel was looking to learn karate, he was really upset that he was being taught how to wax cars. But Mr. Miyagi enforced his rules and said that this is what you are to do day in and day out. Daniel begrudgingly went along with this and day after day was waxing on and waxing off cars. Once the time was right, Mr. Miyagi showed him that what he was actually doing was training for karate. He revealed to him that the motions he was doing during the waxing on and off of cars were, matter of fact, blocks within the karate form. Hebrews 10.1 says, For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. In my video, Final Verdict, Should Christians Follow the Torah, I show you that virtually all the works of the flesh that are contained in the Mosaic Law were shadows which represented spiritual or heavenly things. Take circumcision, for example. The Jews were to circumcise their males on the eighth day so that they were physically set apart from the rest of the world, something that they could all see. But this was only a shadow of a truer reality because in the new testament we see that it is not circumcision of the flesh that sets you apart from the world it is circumcision of your heart something that is unseen that makes you set apart from the world and so you see with daniel waxing on and waxing off cars he was essentially performing something that was a shadow of a truer reality the fact that he was training for karate now that he understands what that true reality is, Daniel isn't going back to waxing on and waxing off cars. He is perfecting his art, or in our case, perfecting our faith. All these things that were written down before us were written down for us upon whom the end of the ages have come. The Torah isn't beautiful for following it based on the letter code or ink that it stands for. The true beauty of the Torah is understanding that these laws which required works of the flesh 
or just physical manifestations or shadows of spiritual principles. And the true mystery or revealings of God is to see how these physicalities represent spiritual things. In essence, just as Jesus used parables of human things to represent spiritual principles, these laws were in essence parables unto themselves. Now for this last analogy, I'll bring us back to something we all experienced during school. You always knew that there were some kids that were book smart. They could basically memorize anything and be able to ace all the exams. But then, sometimes those same people didn't have common sense. Rather, you had a whole different breed of people that were more street smart. They may not have been able to ace all the exams, but with what knowledge they did have, they were able to put it into motion or action and have it be effective in the real world. Now with regards to the Torah, you actually see this played out with the Jews. They strap what is called a tefillin to their heads and to their arms, which symbolically represents the word of God and his Torah. And in their prayers, they try to commit this to memory. But as I've shown you in the first parable, that really does nothing to build your faith. If the Torah says don't shave your beard and you don't shave your beard, are you spiritually growing? If the Torah says to circumcise your child and you circumcise your child, are you spiritually growing? No, it is basically just following simple commands as long as you memorize them well enough. Now, while I've shown you the extreme example with the Jews strapping the tefillin to their head, those who are not Jews by blood and are Torah observant are essentially doing the same thing, trying to learn which laws are applicable to them and committing them to memory since there are 613 of them so that they don't miss it in their everyday life. Now, compare this to the example of who is street smart. Well, if you read through Hebrews 11, it actually talks about what makes you spiritually grow. What is faith in action or faith in motion? All of us were saved because we had faith, a hope in the unseen. None of us have seen Jesus Christ personally. We haven't seen God the Father. But in our hope and trust of the unseen by our faith, we are saved. And it is likewise, by this type of faith, we spiritually grow. Hebrews 11 talks about how Abraham, by faith, was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. Noah, by faith, decided to build the ark based on God's commands, facing lots of persecution and mockery and scoffing, but still he trusted in this unseen God by his faith. Rahab the prostitute, she hid Israelites from her own people, knowing that if she got caught, she and her family would be sentenced to certain death. By faith, she was trusting in the law that was inscribed on her heart that she needed to protect this people. Moses, by faith, gave up his rights as an Egyptian and decided to be with his people. Furthermore, even though it seemed like certain death when they were cornered against the Red Sea, by faith, Moses parted the Red Sea by the power and glory of God and led his people to the other side. 1 Peter chapter 1 says it best. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so here you see when it talks about in Galatians, we all start this journey by the Spirit in faith. We continue this journey in faith, trying to listen to what our God has to say to us, the commands that he wants us to obey, the real life motion or application of our faith in accordance with the law of the Spirit which is set upon our hearts. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody.